So what happens in the postnatal? So in postnatal, it is again divided into three things. So although the multiple parameters are taken into consideration, that is a calicial dilatation, parenchymal thickness, appearance, ureter, bladder. So what happens in the postnatal? So in postnatal, it is again divided into three things. So although the multiple parameters are taken into consideration, that is a calicial dilatation, parenchymal thickness, appearance, ureter, bladder, whichever is the most severe of the things is being graded as the if there is a severity, if the bladder thickness is abnormal, then probably or the ureters are abnormal, rest of the things are abnormal, then you would probably grade it into high risk. So even any of the parameters, we are looking at five parameters here: the calicial dilatation, the parenchymal thickness, ureters, bladder, these things. So the if any of those things it falls into the higher one, so we get it in the highest category here. So what happens in the P1, which is the antenatal was A, postnatal was P, again P1, P2, and P3. This is the P1, this is P2, and this is P3. So what do you do for P1, which is low risk means that is normally what we know is less than 10 mm is the renal pelvic diameter in the third trimester. And this also persists after 48 hours of life. So beyond 48 hours of life less than 10 mm is the norm. So anything beyond 10 mm what we see is abnormal. So in P1 what we see is that there is 10 to 15 mm of diameter dilatation is present plus central calicial dilatation is present. What do we do in this? We do nothing but we follow it up with a scan again at 1 to 6 months that is day 28 or probably month of one to six so we previously we used to do a follow-up at probably three to six months so if it was the presence the presence of p1 that there is still there is some amount of pelvic calicial dilatation that is 10 to 15 mm there's mild amount of dilatation in one or both the kidneys we follow it up with a scan at one to six months of life so what we don't do here there is no need of any antibiotic prophylaxis there is no need of any vesicocystoid urethrogram there is no need of pediatric urologist recommendation or you don't need a DMS scan as well. So after going through what happens in P1, what happens in P2 is you know that there's a 10 to 15 mm is the one. So here you take into account that is SFU is grade 3 or it is 10 to 15 mm with other changes as well that is there is some amount of pelvically peripheral there was only central calicial dilatation here the central has increased and reaching up to the periphery as well. So the presence of peripheral calicial dilatation is what makes it P2 and presence of abnormal parenchymal thickness makes it P3. So in P2 which categorized into surgical fetal urology, society of fetal urology grade 3, usually it has more than 15 mm of dilatation and as well as the calicial dilatation goes into periphery as well. So what do we do is we do a scan between 1 to 3 months. Here it was 1 to 6 months, here it is see that there is 1 to 3 months so the frequency of scans higher and the urgency is a little bit more but still there is again no need of few things that is no need of antibiotic prophylaxis no need of pediatric urologist no need of vcug or a dmsa so what happens in the last one that is p3 we see that the parenchymal thickness is abnormal or parenchymal appearance may be abnormal ureters may be abnormal but bladder always remains normal among these three the bladder always remains abnormal so if all these are present we do a scan as soon as at one month of life so it is more than 15 mm here as well so at one month of life we do a scan plus we do a vesicocystoid urethrogram and we take into account a pediatric urology Grading. So antibiotic prophylaxis is again given as plus minus. So I would like to sum it up. Presence of P1, P2 and P3. What was A1 and A2 becomes P2, P1, P2, P3. So less than 10 mm is the norm. 10 to 15 mm with central calicial dilatation categorizes as the low risk that is P1. What you do is 1 to 6 months is scan, nothing else. So nothing else is done. So if there is any presence of P2 that is the after 48 hours of life although the diameter is less than 15 mm but there is presence of peripheral calicial dilatation so the takeaway point here is presence of peripheral calicial dilatation will categorize as p2 and what you do is, is you repeat the scans more frequently that is what you used to do is one to six monthly scan was being done previously probably do it in earlier as as early as two to three months of life Still, there is no role of an antibiotic prophylaxis. There is no role of as ecosystem of program, DMSA, pediatric urology. So we see that although there is some amount of calcial dilatation, there is no real hurry here. We are simply following up the case. 
What happens in P3? P3 is the one important which requires a lot of, it has to be handled very carefully. So it requires more frequent vigilant observation and probably early intervention as well. So although it is more than 15, so what are the things that categorize as P3? One is most importantly, more than 15 mm of uh, anterior posterior linear pelvic diameter, peripheral calicial dilation, which is already present here. The parenchymal thickness becomes abnormal. So the cortical thickness start reducing here. So this is when you would like to intervene much earlier and you would also do a seco cystic You don't want to miss out on any PUG obstruction or seco VO or PUV, these things you do not want to miss out on. And this is when you would like to intervene much earlier. You would like to take a pediatric urologist into picture and also start an antibiotic prophylaxis. Although Nelson mentioned it as like presence, you can do it or not. But ideally, so everything has to be done whenever there is a, these things are into consideration. Music